buddy. The man, the myth, the legend. What's going on, man? <laughs> Wouldn't myth and legend mean that I'm dead or past? I mean, there's sort of a mythical, uh, you know, nature about you just in the, in the CrossFit world. I'm sure you're aware. Either, either they love you or they hate you. Mythical. <laughs> How's everything going, man? Good. I'm good, thank you. How are you? Good, man. Can't complain. Good. How's how's the uh, how's the new year treating you? It's been good. Um, I don't know where to start. I have lots to update you on uh, for the last time you and I have chatted directly. Um, yeah. But it's all good, man. Nice. Yeah, good. You back in Arizona or? Uh... Yep. Yep. Nice. Easy. How's it? Uh, how's it been over there with like you know COVID and stuff and lockdown? I mean. Yeah. Um. I think we have a Governor Ducey was always a. Uh, a little bit more, um, more hesitant to do the, I guess, the more extreme version of what's considered lockdowns, yeah. um, as well as uh, always pump the, 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 the brake a little bit on the like, you know, all kids, you know, kids are going to be carrying this and they got to go. So, you know, he was like, well, let's just stretch this out and think about it a little bit. And um, for, we had, there was a little bit of kerfuffle for I would say, which was similar to other states in in the economy and industry and uh, labor for people uh, when it happened, but he he, he uh, you know was a little bit more hesitant to to pump the brakes on you know not allowing people to go about their business, but just trying to be really cautious, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. And as you know, we don't know what that what that led to positives and negatives, but that's that's been a, pretty much been this the state of affairs, the capitalist state of affairs here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When did you uh, get back in town? Or I know, I know you spent time in Idaho as well. So, oh yeah, um, that was uh, well. We we spend the summer in Idaho. Okay. Yeah. So I, I've been back uh, since September, but um, more recently, over the uh, uh, Christmas break, we went to uh, West Palm Beach for the first time. Um, How was that? It was. It was great. It was a good experience. Uh, we were like a mile from Mar-a-Lago <laughs> when Trump was there. So- <laughs> <laughs> you hear all the planes coming in you're like yeah, <laughs> yeah. and uh went by epstein's place so saw all the documentaries on that stuff so <laughs> that now that's a myth and legend right there man <laughs> uh, then uh then if he's a myth and legend then i don't want to be called yeah him. you don't exactly no yeah. i i think it's 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 crazy yeah so west palm beach was cool it was nice um yeah the people are nice there um uh, the fitness scene is, is good there. Um, and you know, Florida, Florida has its, uh, its own, uh, style and, and, uh, flavor, which, uh, which sits well with me. Yeah. 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 Same with Arizona. I know when I went out there yeah. and when I would even, when I was even on the, uh, the plane going out there, someone just randomly uh, standing next to me in the line was like, uh, you going out there for like a fitness, um, conference? And I'm like, no, why? And he goes, I don't know. He goes, you look in shape and, you know, I like to work out. And I go, no, I'm going out there. I mean, I was going out there for CCP immersion. And Mm -hmm. then um, I was like, but why do you ask? He goes, oh, you didn't know what? Like, then when I went to Arizona, I found out, you know, the NSCA has their um, organization headquarters there. And then not only your organization, Exos, and Arizona is like a a fitness central. In fact, even when I went to to the uh, Whole Foods, mm-hmm. um, I forgot who I, oh, Jason Phillips, mm-hmm. I remember I, I ran into Jason Phillips and his, uh, and his BMW i8, I'm like, I'm like, what's going on, man, you got any more of that Ignite? <laughs> I forgot what his stuff is called, but <laughs> I know he was, he was big into that, dude. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a hub, it's because of the sunshine. Yeah, vitamin D, man, it makes people mm-hmm. do wild things. Yeah, like uh, be healthier. Yeah, who would have thought that? What are you eating there? Uh, sausage. Oh man. I'm sorry. I'm a little uh, late on it. I, I, I just didn't plan my, uh, my exercises effectively this morning. So I apologize. No, 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 not at all. What, what'd you do this morning? I ran this morning. I usually run on Tuesdays. I ran inside on the treadmill this morning. How, how far did you go? I think it was, well, it was 75 minutes. That's what I wanted. Oh, nice. But I was like 13 or 13 K I think. Nice. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I find myself now 
You know, I still haven't done anything intense. And when I say intense, mm. typical style CrossFit workouts, like mm -hmm. in, I mean, for probably three years. Mm. Like I, I haven't felt the need nor the desire to do something dynamically. I've just been doing strength and then monostructural work, strength, monostructural work. I don't feel the need to even do it anymore. And in fact, would, it makes me feel anxious to even want to do it because of how I used to do it. And it's not that I don't, like for instance, I shouldn't say I don't do it. I don't do it with the intensity level that I used to, of course. Mm -hmm. But there's no desire for me to want to, the only thing I want to push myself on is strength work. The only thing I want to push myself on is like building aerobic base. I don't feel like I want to mix any of the two. And I haven't felt that way for a while since I got out of uh, competitive CrossFit, you know, I think it like did damage to me. I mean, obviously <laughs> I feel but like post-traumatic stress, <laughs> but, but isn't intensity the answer to everything? Like, how are you, how do you expect to live long and prosper with your stupid weights and cardio? Yeah, that's, uh, that's what I, you know, that's what was uh, up against me when I first switched to, uh, to OPEX initially, which was you're taking away my candy and you're a douchebag for wanting to, uh, for wanting to make me think rationally about my fitness and yeah. my health. Yeah. And I, I, I who the I fuck are you to do that? Right? <laughs> I find it fascinating that, and I know I spoke to you about this almost, almost a year ago, actually, um, how 20, if 2020 didn't bring to the forefront, how, how our fitness actually plays a role in our life or doesn't actually play a role in our life. I don't know what year would have done that because I saw people who and granted, I know coronavirus was on a tear, but I saw people who considered their very identity by who they are as defined by their exercise regimen and the goals that they wanted to accomplish. Mm -hmm. And then coronavirus hits and it's like, fuck that. I don't give a shit about my health anymore. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, but, but there, are, there are still clients that I work with um, that still they would have done their they would have cared about their fitness whether or not they had uh, me in the picture no matter what and it's it's astounding to me that there was such a large majority of people who i was associated with that really just were like yeah fuck it i don't care about my fitness at all fuck it like i'm done i'm out of fitness yeah no one talks about those people no yeah, 2020 didn't do a thing for our behaviors of exercise and fitness yeah in my opinion it made it worse but wow. You know, who gets to speak about these things, right? Peloton and uh, fitness marketing companies. And I made a million dollars in leads. These are the people that are making well, money during this time. This is, I don't know how people are reaching out to me. And I mean, I obviously I do know, but friend requesting me and saying, hey, uh, do, you, do you need help with your leads? And I'm like, no. Like, how long have you been in the fitness industry? I'm like, just leave me alone. Like, and <laughs> it's, it's crazy that this is how, again, uh, what is it called? What is that uh, saying? Like when there's a, uh, you know, blood in the water, the, the sharks are coming or whatever, whatever the, uh, the adage is. Right. Yeah. And it's like, they're, they're more concerned about getting leads because people actually do want to get back in fitness, but they yeah. want to get, they want to get into fitness on their terms, which yeah. is like, I want it when I want it. And I don't want it when I don't want it. Yeah. But no, you know, who wants to talk about the moral and ethical issues with that? Like there's, there's blood in the water. Okay. Who the fuck does that make money for? It makes funny. It makes money for a machine and it makes mo money for three people. One really popular person, one tech guru behind the scenes and one business person. Three of those people make money. Thousands of coaches die mm. and the market gets confused. Why? Cause there's six other versions of that. Right. So, you know, and, it, and this is, this is all the consumer sees and this is yeah. all the, the coach sees. Yep. You gotta be agile. You gotta adapt. Uh, tech is going to kill you. Apple fitness is going to, you know, do this fucking Peloton is going to eat your lunch. It's like, just a second here. What are we actually talking about? 
Oh, oh, fitness. What do you mean by that? Uh, exercise. Oh, what do you mean by that? Coach and client. Oh, so a relationship. Uh, uh, you know, stops. Yeah, yeah. No conversation. Yeah, yeah. It, just, it just stops at that. So they jump over the coach, right? They jump over the coach and, and say to the market. And then they speak to the coaches and fear monger them, right? Like, if you don't have this fucking CRM system and front end shit, you know, you're going to be, you're going to be lost, right? You're not going to have anything. Um, and so it's a, it's so to your point, to, to yeah. 2020, wake people up to that. No, it's just an example of making more money for a few people. Yeah. And the thing is too, you brought up like the CRMs. If you actually don't have a CRM and I know how fucking illogical this is in the first place, if you don't have a CRM and you're not going after the client, like they normally want to be sought you're deemed like from the client's perspective like oh this 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 gym or this person like ah nah you know this I need is to, weird he wants to yeah. have a conversation like who the fuck is that guy you know and it's it's, <laughs> it's it's insane it's insanity that when i initially did uh transferred from across the gym which was highly unconscious it was it was unconscious yeah it was unconscious unconscious right they didn't know that they didn't know. Mm -hmm. So they were going into the exercise, the, into the arena of fitness, which was my gym. And like, it, it was like the sixties, like uh, what is it? Um, you know, tune in, turn off, drop out. Right. So mm -hmm. they were coming in to do just that and be bodied on the floor in a pool of fucking sweat. And then they would be like, Oh man, that felt so good. <laughs> and and then when I when I took the when I took the the teat away from them, they were like, "Fuck this! I don't want to do this. I don't want to think about my fitness. I I want to eat." I literally had clients who said, "I want to eat my cookies and ice cream. I don't care about my health." Um. So then when Are I want yourself, <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. The, there were people who were in their 60s who actually stayed um, on yeah. and they came up to me after I gave like a town hall sort of meeting and they were like, they're like, John, um, we don't agree with that person at all, but um, we'll stay because this shit is too tough, man. And I'm like, I'm like, thank you, man. I appreciate it. I'm glad you realize. But when I wanted to even give the, um, the I even mentioned to these clients that Hey, let me know. I'll, I'll discuss anything with you. I'll discuss any concerns. And when I actually had the conversation with some of them, James, it was like, it was like they never had a, a real conversation in their lives. And I'm like, how did you get this far? Mm -hmm. How did you, how are you here right now? And it's because again, everything that they do is creating lack of responsibility in themselves and they don't even realize how far they've come until they're like you know there's a buddhist saying right it's like the the buddhist teacher um or uh, there was a person who was wanting to seek wisdom from the buddha right and um he goes to the buddha and the 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 student goes i want to learn so much i want to learn i want to learn i want to learn and the Buddha slaps him on the, on the head. And he, and he goes, why'd you do that? Why'd you do that? And he slaps him on the head again. And he goes, stop doing that. Why are you doing that? And he slaps him on the head again. And he says, stop. He says, don't do that. The fourth time, he slaps him and he steps back. And he goes, okay, now you understand. And it's like, the reason why he understands now is because it's not something that he's being taught. It's something that he has to realize like in himself, like, Oh, I could just back up from the fucking smacking that I'm getting. Whereas everybody that was coming to the gym was like getting mm -hmm. metaphorically smacked in the face every day. And they're just like, I just want more. I just want more. Yep. It was a beautiful uh, and fascinating setup, wasn't it? It really was. And when, when I first got my, uh, my certification back in the day, I remember the, the, the most logical um, statement I ever received was from um, Dennis Marshall. So Dennis Marshall, 
OPEX, um, OPEX Garden City. <laughs> I don't even know if they're CrossFit Garden City anymore. I think they, uh, I, I don't know what they are anyway, but um, Garden City Fitness maybe. Um, he goes, I go to him, hey man, like I really want to do c competitions and I want to compete. And this is around the time that I think I had like a, a 330 Fran back in like 2008 or 340, whatever it was. And it was like, I was, I was pretty good. <laughs> I couldn't front squat like more than 155 pounds, but I could, I could move 95. Right. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And he goes, he, he, Dennis Marsh is like, he goes, dude, you really want to get good at this sport? He goes, you got to do bodybuilding. And I'm like, I'm like bodybuilding. I'm like, fuck that. I'm like CrossFit. We hate bodybuilding, bro. <laughs> and he goes, listen, get this book from Charles Poliquin. And I'm like, Charles who sounds like an idiot. I'm like, he, he wants me to do tempo. I'm like, fuck that, man. I'm like, and I went down that pathway for like another four or five years, but nice base support for you. Yeah. He yeah, actually Dennis. told me to seek you out too. And I did. Yeah. Dennis, yeah, yeah. Dennis was a, a part of the big dogs uh, group. He had uh, from afar stayed connected with our, with our ideas way back in the day. He's a, he's a good person, good soul. And uh, he asked some hard questions when he was doing CCP. I think he was in person to one CCP, I believe, on the East Coast. Um, but then uh, he did some stuff online, and uh, yeah, he asked some good questions. Yeah, the qu the questions are themselves too um, too tempting to even um, want to give an answer to now, especially in uh, fitness. And um, yeah, it's kind of funny that I did. Obviously, I didn't plan on this. I was talking with Tara with setting up this. Uh, this uh, podcast date, and it's funny that um, Matt Fraser, <laughs> Matt Fraser. Sorry, I don't want to offend anybody. <laughs> um, <laughs> he uh, he retired yesterday. Yeah, I think it's good for his long term health. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good for him. Right, five years of dominance. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, wild. That was, that was good for him. So tell me what's going on uh, with uh, you guys. You said you had a lot to, uh, there's a lot been going on. Uh, well, a lot, a lot just because I haven't spoken to you personally for a long while, right? Yeah. So, you know, nothing, uh, no, no huge things, but just a lot, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know? So uh, no, things are, you know, let me think about just like what's happening in the current, you know, timeline, like, being present right now in a new cohort for CCP, which is, nice. which is always fun. Um, we just did uh, our uh, lecture on uh, resistance training yesterday, which is always uh, really good. The topics inside and the, the learnings on behalf of the coaches and myself. Um, you know, I'm still uh, involved with uh, the Brand X um, method for youth uh, fitness education and still, still, uh, trying to find our way out there for that big hill to climb. Mm. Um, I'm a little bit further removed from big dogs, but still I'm involved in the management of the, that business for online coaching for people who are interested in uh, intense uh, fitness or fitness competition. Yeah. Um, and I'm doing, uh, I would say more leadership with uh, the gyms um, with education and, uh, and just staying, you know, staying on the straight and narrow with the gyms as to what our beliefs are and what we want to do. And, um, you know, we're still, we're still working on that of uh, trying to, trying to improve it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's all good, man. It's all nice. good. I, uh, my health is good. I'm, uh, you know, I don't have any Im impeding things that don't allow me to, to do what I do all week. And I exercise uh, every day and do different things. Um, uh, my my daughters are growing up, and I'm experiencing a great relationship with them as they grow, um, and uh, still maintaining a good, growing, strong relationship with my wife. That's, uh, uh, those are all yeah, good I'm, things, man. Yeah, I'm I'm very grateful. I'm happy. I'm healthy. And horny, of course. <laughs> I just didn't want your show to get canceled. <laughs> oh, don't worry. It'll, it, it may get canceled. I'm having a. My wife is well. I, I, I don't want to say I'm having a baby because that might be, I might get canceled if I say that. 
or maybe I might get go to the top of the list, but my wife and I are having a, a child um, in uh, July 27th. Congratulations. Thanks, man. Yeah. It's going to be, it's a wonderful time. Yep. Absolutely. I can't wait. I'm like, I'm like, I, I just, now that I'm, I'm having one, I'm like, I can't wait to like have another one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I don't, don't, don't let her edit that part out. So when she's listening, <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. No, no, it's, but... it's a wonderful part of life. It, um, it's so, it's such a natural, wonderful process of, uh, of, uh, of an alignment, uh, check, you know, it just, yeah, it's just so, yeah, it just ties in nature and ties in reason um yeah it's just a it's, a it's a wonderful moment so I'm, I'm happy that you get to i recall every time someone says i'm pregnant we're having a child i always recall those moments when my children were first born and uh the reason why i talk about it because it always gives me um a really great feeling um just those moments were it's just one of those human feelings that are just you can't you know i just can't wait to experience it that's yeah, why man. i wrote it again I know when we uh we had spoke uh, a while back, you're like you're like, dude, when you have a kid, obviously you said this in fewer words or maybe more, but um, you're like, when you have a kid, that's when you realize like you will fucking kill for that kid. <laughs> so, so we're driving down from New York to Texas, right? My wife's behind me, and uh, I'm driving one car, she's driving another one, and I don't see her, and I'm like. Like where the where the fuck is she? And I call her. I'm like, where are you? She's like, oh, I I just got be I got stop. I'm like stop behind a truck. Like he's going slow, because I'm like so worried about her now. It's crazy. Like it mm. just instantly happens. Yeah, it's powerful, isn't it? <laughs> it's powerful, and uh, but, so, but so normal. But that's yeah. why it, that's why it's that's why it is powerful because it's such a, it's such a massive truth, you know, of, uh, just gives you a connection to, you know, what, why are we doing, why are we doing any of this thing? And then when you make another person, like another person who has, you know, on a continuum, different levels of empathy and compassion and kindness and the ability to love, the ability to speak and communicate, like that's a pretty special moment, right? That's a pretty unbelievable partaking. Um, yeah, so it's just the coolest thing, man. Yeah. Can and then the other and then the other side of the equation, once it's done, you're like, okay, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's all I'm here for. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. My pecker's going down, it's falling off. I got, you know, they're on their own now. They don't need it's like, what the fuck? You know, fitness. I guess I'll talk about fitness. <laughs> no, I know, man. I know. No, we, we talk about that a lot. It's like I even had a I had a Seamus Omani on from uh, Can Medicine Be Cured? Mm -hmm. And um, he, he draws a lot of his material from this guy called uh, Ivan Illich, who was a priest and a, uh, a social critic. I think he was Croatian. And he, he wrote a book, this guy, Ivan Illich, called The Limits of Medicine, The Expropriation of Health. Mm -hmm. And um, he talks a lot about, you know, I want to say it's like a Buddhist um, understanding of life. Like life is suffering and medicine cannot give us a cure all for life as suffering. And it's not that you're better off, uh, you know, just get on with it in a, in a way, but it's like, we're searching all of these things outside of ourself, but it's, it's not, it's not that it's futile, but you're not getting out alive. So like, wh wh what is the, like, not legacy, but what is the thing that you really are driven by that's going to provide possible meaning or more than is just on the surface of things, you know? And, and it's funny that the way in which you developed OPEX, even before that OPT, was, was right in alignment with that. You know, like you knew there was more behind the scenes than what was going on. You knew there was more than just, yeah, let's, let's fucking do an AMRAP. Let's, let's do uh, three rounds for time. Let's do Helen. Like, 
how did you break all of that down in your in your own mind and realize that it was like anything else because when i see people even now in the gym i'm like why do we make it so complicated and think it's so different than anything else we would want to approach yeah um well i think remember that the uh when the message came out and the idea it was sold to a lot of people under this concept of dissidence that if you didn't believe in that way, then we don't want you a part of it. So there was never an opportunity to go, why do three rounds of those things? And I just, I just, because of my previous experience in fitness and coaching, I asked that of myself, right? I asked that of myself. I didn't like publicly always talk about it, but when it came time to publicly talk about it, then I was kicked to the curb. And now for all good reasons, you know, we all aligned and got things done effectively is what we wanted to do. But I think, uh, that when you say kick, kick, kick to the curb, then you were like, you were part of what was going on. In the oh, early. like this, this is the message, right? Oh, we want everyone's opinion. We want all different kinds of ideas. And then you'd come in and give an idea. It's like, ah, uh, no, 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 you can't say that. You know, you can't, you can't say, oh, bodybuilding is important for six years prior to participating in this. Oh, you can't say that everyone should be assessed before they do any kind of class. You can't say that group conditioning kills coaches. You, you know, I, I had a list of 37 things. How right? did you get to that list? Like, I'm, I'm curious because I just like, be, during that time, I'm like, wow, like you were really like, I, I mean, light years ahead of their own thinking about it. Yeah, it seems like that. But just remember, I, I was just around earlier. That's it. Like, I, yeah. I think I... I don't know. I was a coach in fitness and curious and like inside of like, well, how does this work and how, what's the effect on each person? Yeah. So I had all that training and experience before the message came out in the propaganda. Right. Um, so yeah, I was just, so it should make sense to people that I was an early adopter to the concept. I looked at it and it's nothing special, right? It's just no. that I saw things differently. People were like, to your point, you know, how did you see what was inside or why did you take those steps to see what's more inside Helen? Mm -hmm. It's like, because I had investigated work for 10 years prior, you know? So when you say, well, this is work also, and this is the thing, right? I was like, hmm, that is interesting, you know? And then I started to pick it. But as I started to pick it, you can't be picking it. You can't be picking at that, you know? Um, why, why not do burpees with deadlifts together in terms of patterns and output? It's like, no, 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 it's just, just mixed movements. And this is the answer, right? It's like, but there's a better way possibly. So no, 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 it's not a better way. You think you're so smart. Uh, you actually don't know anything. Like this is the message that was pushed out, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, anyways, yeah. get everyone on board on our team. You know, this, you know, you gotta have a, you gotta have a split bipolar, right? It makes it work. You're, on, you're either on our team or you're not on our team. If you're on our team over here, this is the rules you abide by. And if you don't abide by those rules, we're gonna kick you to the curb and we're not gonna talk about you anymore, Yeah. right? And we're gonna keep you coming back inside of here because this is popularity and it'll get you social media, right? And so if you're over here and you become like a naysayer, you seem as like a, you know, a critic or, um, you know, just an unhappy curmudgeon, you know? That's, that's what you end up being viewed as, which, you know, makes sense. It should make sense that I'm viewed as that. You know? Yeah, it's, it's, it's this like tribalism and- Yeah, it's personified. That, yeah, pers exactly, because on the one hand, what you're saying is like, why I talked about this in a previous podcast. It's like, we're in the realm now of just saying yes to everything. Meanwhile, when you get to the heart of an issue with anyone, like if James Fitzgerald was out in the street and he saw somebody and he saw me and he's like, Hey man, you, you know, like you work out. And I'm like, no, and maybe you're, or I'm like, yeah, yeah, I work out. And like, Oh, what do you do? I'm like, oh, I do whatever, whatever it is. And you're like, cool. It's like, you didn't really learn anything from me, but if, but if I get to the point where we're in, we're in a discussion and, and I'm like, no, James, I don't think that way. Like, I think differently. It would be you telling me like, oh, well, you're a douchebag if you think mm -hmm. that way. And that's, mm -hmm. that's what happens in, in the CrossFit world. Yeah. And yeah. Unfor unfortunately, and it's because of this, like, <laughs> I know you remember, I remember if you didn't have like, uh, this is even crazy to say like board shorts, fucking, uh, innovates F like two thirties or converse, 
and high socks, you're like, yo, do you even do CrossFit? Yeah. And, and, and to me, I haven't really seen an uptick during coronavirus, although I do see people going back into the gym just like they normally would anyway, just like an ebb and flow. Yeah. But I'm not sure it has the same appeal um, for people as it once did, because it seems that, the, again, we know this to be true, just based on conversations and based on data, that the life cycle of people inside that framework is very low. And even though there may be people who have been doing it for five, 10 years, it's like, but still, you're like, you're like the exception. And what you say you're doing, you know, scaling back the workout, it's like, okay, like, but you're not, you're not doing CrossFit. You're, you're not, you're doing, you're doing bench press and fucking jogging. Like you're splitting them up. Even though you say you did a wad, you're fucking splitting them up. Like it's supposed to be for time quickly done quickly with dynamic contractions. You can't move dynamically and you can't actually express it. So like, don't call yourself and say that you're doing it, which is why I said to you with, with the, uh, with the way the open is going now, it's like, you can do the open in the comfort of your home for what, <laughs> for what it's like pay 20 bucks and just like, yeah, like feel like you're a part of something. Why not? Why not? $2. At, why not? $14. No, why not two though? Yeah. Why, why not one fifty? Why not just free? and get and you get and you print out a fucking thing that says i participated in the 2020 open yeah. and i placed 14,000th place well there's a lot of money that goes into the technology of building a uh, leaderboard for separation of country blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm if you don't have a cost for it it's not deemed a value for people to we just want people to be healthy and we don't want we want to have full access to all different kinds of opportunities. And this, this idea that we want people to be healthy, it, 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 I always come to back, go back to the, the argument itself. I'm like, why do, one, who are we? Two, what do we mean by health? And three, why? Like, why is it, like, I'll, I'll give you an example. And I talked about this with Seamus just briefly, and he brought it up. Like, obviously, it, you and I, and people possibly listening are aware that people who come from different, you know, socioeconomic backgrounds actually do have a different life expectancy as you would just, as you would probably know based on, you know, the health of the people that they're associated with, just the culture, you know, but we automatically think it's, it's something to do with like, Hey, if we gave them good health care, yeah. if we gave them more money, Mm -hmm. If we gave them a better living standard, to me, it, it, it's, it seems like the same exact thing with fitness. It's like, if I were to give a thousand people who fucking don't want to exercise mm -hmm. or 500 who do, 500 who don't, and I say, hey, I'm going to coach you for free, there still would be that breakdown because it, it takes the onus of responsibility away from the person and mm -hmm. puts it back on like the quote unquote lack thereof. And in a similar way, it's the same thing with like the way the open is constructed now. Like, Hey, yeah. if, you, if you have a, if you have no equipment, you can still do the open. Yeah. But the, everyone thinks that the, they'll just, you know, just because they're acting upon it and doing it, all these people, these unconscious, unconscious nurse, whatever, um, they're just going to become awake over time. That's their answer to it. That's their argument to it. Yeah, because the they're, they're you know back room they're all like, listen, James, we know, we know, right? Like, we know, but hey, you know, it gets people in, and we get to change people's lives, and they become, you know, and I'm like, that's fraudulence, actually. That's not, uh, that's not a, a relationship, you know. That's you're pulling the veil over their eyes. You're lying to them, and you don't have proof and data that shows that you actually transform them and their thoughts because your retention is the shits. That's publicly, we're aware of this, right? Oh yeah. So no, don't give me that. But that's the argument generally they come back with. It's like, yeah. oh, we, oh, we get it, James, we get it. Um, but they'll become aware, you know? That, that word aware is like- And I just, you know, I just, I just stop at that because obviously, 
you know, we made our decisions. We put our stake in the ground. It's like, yeah, well, you know, we, you know, we fell prey to that before. We knew it's, it's not going to work. Um, so now we're just like, no, you're not going to get that. This is what you're going to get. Um, and, uh, you know, but that, there won't be 15,000 uh, little micro gyms that uh, will do that. And that's, that's not a signal of a lack of success. That's a signal of the, of the perception in fitness today. Yeah. The lack of awareness. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And um, I think it's, again, just to <laughs> put the nail on the coffin, so to speak, it's like, I don't understand. I mean, I, I don't understand, to be honest, how we think fitness is so different from any other portion of our lives. Like, if you're like, if, if, if someone, if somebody was doing a, having a mechanic shop and the guy was like, Hey, come one, come all, you know, I'll fix your car in 30 seconds. You'd look at this guy and you'd be like, Oh, this guy's selling like snake oil. But yeah. for some reason, for some fucking reason, I mean, Facebook doesn't even allow you to show, doesn't even allow you anymore to show, which is I mean, I think they did it even before um, now, but they don't allow you to show like the before and after photos because it's deemed uh, insensitive or not possible for people. I don't know if you're aware of that, but you like, <laughs> no, I swear to God, dude, and that's like, that's how far we've come where it's like, for instance, I can't believe I'm living in this world. This is fucking, this is fucking Gattaca. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just finished brave new world. And I'm like, I don't know if you've read that book, but, Brave New World is oh, like man. that's the wrong time to read that right now. <laughs> it's like let's let's talk about the future. Brave New World. People, Huxley Orwell. Huxley yeah. Orwell. Like what, yeah. who had it closer? Um, I think based on right now, it looks like Brave New World was a little bit closer because he talks about yeah, how right. there's no no such thing as parents, mom or dad or brother yeah. or sister. Yeah. They're they're all identical. Everyone's happy now. That's yeah. the that's the that's the the main yeah. goal of the book. Yeah. And it's like the only person who was actually aware in the whole book was the savage, John, the savage, yeah. um, whom I have no relationship with, <laughs> but um, he ended up killing himself because he's like, what if I become in this world where I, I wanted to be aware, but my awareness was too much to handle in a way. And it's yeah. like, we're, we're living in a time now where even if the mere suggestion of like, Hey, you could achieve this. Like, I, I know it's kind of a, a clickbait and things like of that nature um, of showing a before and after a man or a woman, um, et cetera. But if, if, if you're not looking towards improving yourself just because you want to improve yourself, like how do you want to improve yourself? So what, what, what are we left with? We're left with, like you said, buying a Peloton that ends up uh, becoming a, a laundry hanger. Um, you know, Don't forget the whoop band. Oh Yeah. <laughs> don't even get me started because dude for for so many years i would tell my wife i'm like you know what i, I want to get one and then i'd be like ah fuck it i don't need one like why the fuck do i need one in the first place because john I, you need to be told when you need water also yeah. you, need to be, you need to you need to figure out how many hours you slept that's yes. you know, and you need to know what your heart rate is while you're walking to work this is these are key this is when you're standing. You need to be reminded that you've been sitting for 20 minutes, right? That's that's where the Apple Watch comes in. Uh, you need to be reminded to keep your shoulders back. So, we can, you know, let's just keep our shoulders up for the rest of this podcast. We stand up. We should walk. I should walk <laughs> around with my MacBook. Yeah, that would even be better. In fact, and I need a reminder to do that. Oh, wait now. I have a watch that can remind me of that. So this is the other thing. I was, uh, someone sent me a video of, I think it's in, um, now I don't know where it was. I think it was in Poland or somewhere where they have laptops that you plug in your laptop to for charging and you actually sit down on a bike and the bike actually. Oh, yeah. And again, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's so like people are looking at it and they're like, what? this is great. We need this. And it's like, if we had 4,000 of them in fucking JFK, yeah. They would be utilized, but what, why, like, wh what is the, it's probably more expensive to create that than it is to actually run electric. So, yeah. and, why don't you see that though? That's why my, I'm question is to you. Um, I know this is your podcast. To be answered. No, no, I don't care. Questions, but, no, um, you could ask me questions. I mean, you've heard me speak about that before. Why, why do you, why are you surprised by the fact that 
there's like we're generations deep in this lack of awareness of fitness. I mean, that shouldn't surprise you. I'm more surprised or I guess I'm surprised by it, I guess would be the right word because so, something would tell me or something should resonate with me that we're like moving towards in all of our, in, in everything that we've done in, in society, right? Mm -hmm. If we take a grand scheme approach to things, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we, we thought at one point, you know, heat was, you know, uh, what warms us, right? Heat is what warms us. But now we know it as molecular kinetic energy, right? Mm -hmm. That is uh, molecules themselves uh, moving faster. Something would have told me that we've moved beyond like the euphemisms and now we're entering an age where, yeah, we are thinking more rationally. We're using reason. We're be able to use logic, but it's like all of the things that, all of the things that we should be questioning are now taken as um, presumptive answers and, you know, realities rather than being able to still question. I would have thought that by now, 2020, we would have been able to be like, hmm, let's think about this critically. But it's like, no. the more shit that comes out, it's like, no, no. oh, yeah. Like, yes, 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 yes. Like, we, yeah. we don't want to even think about it critically. And I, I don't know if it's something in my, my fucking head from studying philosophy and religion, or is it, or is it just the fact that I don't know, people aren't aware? Like, are we going to say like 95% of people aren't aware? I mean, I guess, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. well, I, I, can't, I can't take a stab at it. I think it's just a question that we may want to always ask of ourselves. Like, why, why are we surprised by that? I'm, I'm not surprised by it. Um, why? But that, but that doesn't mean that- Why know, aren't you surprised by it though? Um, let me think about that. I, I don't know, I kind of I look at, uh, at other things that are happening and uh, you see precedent from like 2000s and the time, you know, the time I've been like, quote unquote, curious in fitness and culture and how all this stuff mixes together and been in the trenches since 1994 that I can go, yeah, okay, well, it, you know, so, and then I, I just simply look at data points just to make sure I pull my head up. I'm like, am I are we really making an impact? And we're not, you know, <laughs> you're not making an impact. And so how do you look at that, right? Impact would be there's actually like objective measures that would indicate people's changes in thought. Um, not to pull this into the equation, but, and you would have to correct me if I'm wrong on this, but uh, there was like 150, 155 million people that voted this year, right? 155 yes. million people. Uh, but yep. based on Michael Porter's evidence anyways on, isn't there like 30, it's like 38% Democrats, 30, 30% or sorry, no, 28% Democrats or 28% Republican, 31% Democrat and 42% independent. Okay. So we'll, we'll just, you know, stop the presses, right? Like, but wait now, our entire political system means that you have to be in this game to be on one side or the other in order to move some human to the top in order to get your ideas passed in what's called the best, you know, democracy on the planet. Right. So that this, this is just a, no, some may say, well, what the fuck, what the fuck does this guy to do with perception and fitness? <laughs> is that those are those like pull your head out of your ass and look at how fat people are getting and how the increase in fatness is there. Okay. You don't want to call it fat. People are getting heavier. People can't run a I'm mile. To I'm save very offended. Someone, okay. Your fat ass should be able to run a mile in five and a half to six minutes. If you can't, <laughs> I'm going to whip you into shape to get you down <laughs> below five and a half minutes. Um, and that's a free program, by the way. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll sell it on this podcast as a link in. But well, those, are, those are objective measures, John. You know, if you see that moving over time, is like, you know, we're just fucking, we're just talking. Oh, fitness and health and sick care and blah, blah. And then you pull your head up is like worse, you know, lower in mortality, first time in 10 years in Western civilization. Yep. I think it's like 26th on the list in the world of uh, where we sit in terms of like, uh, what was it considered healthcare status compared to, I think we were compared to Serbia on that regards, like social, social uh, healthcare or whatever. Yeah. Like 
come on. Like just, so how do I, how am I aware of that? I've just been in it long enough where it's like, it's not making any dents. So you can read Pinker stuff, right? And, oh, and a whole different view, right? It's like, oh, but shit's better. Poverty's lower. We have all these ideas, you know, oh, what? So more people are getting rice and, you know, water is, is not allowing people to die sooner. That, that's great. I'm happy. I'm happy. But in the conversation of what is a quality or higher quality life and a version of living, man, we're not, we're not doing much better. So, so when I see things happen like that in fitness, I'm like, this makes sense. You know, most of you in, with your eyes, you've been born to a generation who has been told that fitness is a fix, right? And yes. now you think, now you think that you can get anything you want because information has said you can get anything you want. And you believe that fitness is the same way. And you've lost this concept of physicality and information, right? And they think, yeah, but I searched things on Google and it said this, you know, and so, but you're like, yeah, but it's going to take you 19 months to get three pull-ups. They actually think you're the fucking devil, right? Not, they don't think that they want to converse with you on the point. They actually think you're the devil, right? So it should just make sense that a majority of people, and sure, you say 95, I don't fucking know, but how many yeah. people are truly aware of their physical sovereignty and, and their physical freedom and knowledge around what to do. Yeah, this is the, this is the fucked up thing. That's like a, 90, that's like how many billionaires. 95% <laughs> of people, 95% of people know what to do. 5% of people act upon what to do. That's the different, differing fucking, uh, you know, crisscross that just should make sense to us. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, Oh, I don't know what to do. That's fucking, don't fucking give me that. I don't know what to fucking do, right? That's you know, all. That's have you all. ever tried broccoli? Oh, I don't like vegetables. Okay. You know what to do. Yeah. You can't, you, it's like, that's, that's your shit to deal with. That's not my shit, but you know what to do. You know, uh, chickens, are fucking omega-6, too high. Okay, fucking find another piece of meat, right? Like, oh, I don't know where to find it. There's this thing called YouTube, right? It's, it's fucking free, right? Listen, my daughter can build a fucking business without even like putting it to market in three hours. My daughter built this Chloe's lip gloss, whatever, coconut oil, Vaseline, packages, Amazon sending your shit, fucking white gown, whatever. And I'm telling you, she had the system set up. You know, this is just her thing, right? She develops five, six, seven of these already. But don't tell me you don't know what to do. All that shit is free. It's available. It's under, it's under whatever you believe you wish to, you wish to become. So let's tie that into fitness. It's available. It's free. It's fucking so simple. And my, and John, we just, everyone wants to get so jammed up on the complexities involved in it. I call it the fitness industry complex. Now I've named it something. It just makes money. It just makes money for a few people, right? Why? Because if it's not complex, everyone will know how to do this thing. Yeah, it's like the uh, emperor w with no shorts, emperor with no clothes. It's no like lemon shorts, yeah. Yeah, lemon. Speaking of which, you t you brought up the, like the fat conversation. Conversation. I've never seen it before in I my. Sorry. <laughs> I never seen it before in my life. Every time that um, I don't, <laughs> I'm just gonna say it. Every time I'm searching for something like, I don't know. Say I'm searching for like sunglasses or whatever it is. A image will pop up and it'll say a, a, a girl who's doing yoga, who's v visibly fat, or let's say visibly heavy, and not just heavy, like very heavy, and like obese. And it says on there, I don't know who the ads, ads are, but it says we have triple X small all the way to 4XL. And I'm like, so on the one hand, <laughs> We're promoting bulimia now. And on the other hand, we're promoting like 4XL. I, I don't get it. Like, what is, the, what, is the, what is the fascination with wanting to glorify someone who is unhealthy, like visibly unhealthy, like actually by conventional uh, no, scientific- the intentions. That's not their intentions. Their intentions, I mean, you know this as well. Their intentions is to virtue signal inclusion. Yeah. Because that's how you sell product. And this is the, this is the interesting thing, right? People are virtue signaling and this company's the greatest because they have that to that. 
and you're a fucking consumer. You're buying their shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and yeah, if, yeah. You, if you want to talk about the characteristics inside of the marketing, like you're doing, you're a fucking asshole. You're an asshole. <laughs> and we're, we're just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, I listen, I love all those people. <laughs> and Absolutely. you want to, you want to get really deep on it. You know, physiologically, I like more and I'll just stop at that. <laughs> um, <laughs> And <laughs> <laughs> you can you can That's, make whatever you can make whatever gonna, decisions you want on that. We're gonna make right? that a meme. Yeah. Physiologically, I like listen, listen, whatever you want to do with that, you know. And I also have lots of background information on how that's actually more healthy to a certain degree, but I won't For go sure. there either. Um, you know, healthy sorry, I'm down a rabbit hole on that now. All I can think about is that. Um, no, go down it because but my, the, we, we've talked about that for quite some yeah, time. Yeah, no, no, there's a, there's, a, there's a fine balance in that. But I, I want to finish my point just on it is that you just have to, like, we got to step back and go, yeah, that's okay. Like, if you want to market that, that's fine. But even as a consumer, no matter how you fit into those clothes, you need to say, I'm still a consumer because the message is steeped with inclusion, right? Absolutely. So and this is what, this is what we need, you know, you and I, and everyone needs to see and listen and not judge it beyond that. Just like, fuck, I have a say, you have a say, everyone has a say about it, but we all, the cat's out of the bag. We all know you're doing that just because you're saying you want to be inclusive to all, right? All sizes and all shapes and forms. And we're just ones that are going to be like, okay, but as a health advocate, I do want to talk about what your marketing says right? What your marketing says, not what you're saying you want it to, th to believe, what it says. And what it does say is this. But if you do Perception that, around value of a life as to how big or small you are. That's the problem I have, right? Absolutely. So, so now why doesn't have everyone problem. have that problem? That's the thing. And, and that's the issue. It's like, but if you see this more and more, like, for example, I'll give you a great example, James. When I was a kid, okay, you can ask any of my friends when I was in first, uh, you know, second, third, fourth, and fifth. I was a gangster type of, you know, uh, 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 clothing wise. You know, I, I wanted a silver chain. I wanted to wear like back in the day, Fifty Cent was huge, so I wanted to wear like the G Unit clothing and shit like that. Why? Because that's what my older sisters had and showed, and that's what I want. I wanted. So it's like you have kids now who actually want to be transgender i know this is a totally different topic too but but mm -hmm. want to be a certain way because you know they got made fun of in school and it's like i got made fun of all the time when i was in school dressing the way i dress like people were like people were like why do you dress like that and i didn't care but i mean maybe it's a, a personal pr uh, difference or a uh, upbringing sort of thing but it's like but what that's the precedent that's being shown and it's to me it's again saying that this life is which don't get me wrong to live that life heavy and overweight whatever like fine you want to live that you, you might even live longer than i will you know i'll be getting hit by a car and, and they'll live till they're 95 but at the same time it's like but there are visibly uh, marked differences in outcomes in you know health if you are doing that and it makes it okay for the company itself to say, Hey, well, we want to market towards this group because nobody has before. And it's like, well, there probably was a reason why no one has marketed to the group because we know it's not in accordance with anything healthy. And yeah. to, and to, to, to stress this point, it's like since the forties, the like Walter Cronkite, you know, this is the way the world, and that's the way every, you know, that's the way the world is or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like, we don't even agree on like, disagreeableness with mm -hmm. issues so it's like we're either promoting you know people who are really really heavy and or we're promoting people who are really really skinny and saying if you're not you know if you don't have a 36d and you know i don't know what what ass measurements people give but and you don't have a you know a bubble butt i guess and you don't have a six-pack if you're a guy and you know big pecs like your life is a worthless piece of sh like worthless and not worthy of a, you're not going to live long. And it's like, how did that conversation just like completely get washed over? Like my, I say it to you all the time. My grandfather never worked out a fucking day in his life. Mm -hmm. He died at 
uh, I think like 85 maybe. I mean, av- I mean, average, you know, age died of cancer, right? Yeah. It's like, why engage in, why engage in fitness at all? Why do, yeah. why do anything? Yeah, well, there's, there's a lot in there that I could comment on. Your final point, though, is just something for people to recognize is the one that hits home is just recognize that our, our uh, fitness and information in fitness is just is a diversion tactic uh, today, and it's folly, right? So to, to your point, like, how, how did it come to be that way? Um, again, in my mind, it makes sense because there's – Everyone has a say. Everyone has a platform. You can talk out of both sides of your mouth. Nothing's really, truly personal and visceral. Um, you could harm people at at uh, you know at length on online, and you're raised in a society that knows that is the way of form of communication and figuring out problems. So it should make sense that people are more lonely, more depressed. It should make sense that. Um, you know, everything looks to be sensationalized and important. You know, it should make sense to us. Why? Because we've been 15 years now inside of this social media experiment that uh, has really fundamentally changed our concepts of reality. So it should make sense that there's people out there who really do think that the value of themselves is lowered um, because of the way they look. Right. And, you know, the effed up thing is there's two sides of that coin. Number one, it's really hard to recognize when you figure out that no one gives a shit about how you look. That's even harder to take. And you thought, oh, they do care. Everyone cares about how I look. like no one fucking cares. Who are you to think people care? So that's one that's really hard to take. Um, Secondly, and to your point, it actually is not connected to health. So, you know, the the where I, I kind of just get exhausted on it to try to figure out and not that I'm exhausted to have more conversation on it, John, but it's just that, you know, it, it, it takes a lifetime to kill someone, you know, and it, it, it and that's a great quote, man. Well, then you got to say, how do we ever figure out what is good and what is right? It's like, I don't think we ever will. I don't think we ever will. I think it'll take a hundreds and hundreds of years to look back and then have people at those times say, that was an interesting experiment. This is, how the, this is how we tried to mesh with technology. And these were the issues that came about. We lost a sense of reality. And I would hope, which I, have, I don't have a lot of good hope for, but I would hope that nature's resources will come back to the forefront where uh, it becomes generationally accepted over time that children are born into a society in which sunshine and movement and quality nutrients and uh, physical expression um, and learning things um, of you know natural physical laws and biology and honoring those processes. You know, I'd hope that comes back to the forefront. James, and, uh, why don't you make a, a school like an elementary school? Because I'll send my kids there. <laughs> yeah. You, I, uh, you, you, you wrote something up one time and I'm like, I showed it to my wife and showed it to some clients of mine. I'm like, wouldn't this be the ideal? I showed it to my sister. I'm like, well, that is charter school. There are charter schools though that have that right in place. Like a uh, Waldorf schools. Uh, or, or style of, yeah. Or style of, um, that's a whole other, I, I'm interested in that conversation too, especially the education, not for today, maybe another time, but the education <laughs> demands and burdens that have been that have been shown and, uh, and individuals that are like stomping, uh, on that, uh, you know, let's call it a small P progressive movement over the charter schools and a new form of public education, which actually John does include what I laid out as the day, right? Expression yeah. of movement, discovery of new things, talk about finances, talk about what a, you know, a, a check is talk about labor, you know, all these different things. Um, and uh, then I go see my daughters and what their layout is or what they're doing in school. <laughs> it's like, just a second now, just a second. <laughs> and so I have to, me and Khan Academy and my wife, we have to educate them on those things, right? Like, this is how you save money. Uh, this is how you save more than what you spend. Um, this is uh, what is called legal responsibility for business ownership. Um, these are what taxes are. Uh, this is what you can say publicly. This is what you can't say publicly. 
this is what this is what your speech means to individuals. This is called hate speech. This is called critical thinking. You know, and, and my children are not taught that in public education, right? So I that has to, definitely has not to take place. So I don't even know how I got down that hole, but that, that has to take place. Because um, I told you I wanted you to make a school. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, I, you know, I do have, I, I'm a really far arm's length away, though, with uh, impacting that. Um, I think it's going to happen as we, we move into a, uh, a stronger association with the Brand X method and, uh, and where we want to take physical, let's call it physical education, because that's what people call it, um, and move it into... Um, move it into education so yeah well I remember um when me and my wife were even talking of having kids we were thinking about Waldorf school and uh we had looked into you know the actual grades themselves and the projects that they would do and it's it's fascinating to me that a program like that costs what it costs but I mean obviously it's it costs what it costs because again there's people who want it. There's people who don't want it. And there's people, there's a market for it. And there's people who are willing to pay and the teachers need to get paid. Uh, right. And when you were looking at the, you know, the grade levels and how they keep um, electronics and the like away from the kids, I think for a number of years before they actually know, they, they focus on uh, more like the oral tradition, so to speak yeah. in the early years, like, yeah, poetry, music, writing, um, dancing, because I, I mean, I know I have, I have a nieces and nephews and when, when they're young, dude, mm -hmm. all they want to do is just like play and enjoy themselves, express themselves, yell, sing, like there's a reason why. And then we bring kids into this elementary education and it's like, Shh. yep. It's like, well, like, don't move Shh. back Shh. don't move and they're like what do i do you know and and me and my wife we were looking into the program and um at the end of each year of the program they would actually do a project which is like a combination which i think is m like fascinating and i'm like fuck i want to go to this school like <laughs> sign me up for first grade because I'll go um, where they where they interweave their uh, all the things that they learned and create something like a, just like a like almost like a thesis in a way at the end of each year and I'm like this is fascinating like yeah why don't schools do this because yeah. it's about getting the kids in and out like in, yeah. in a similar way yeah unconscious unconscious in, in education what do you expect CrossFit unconscious unconscious in fitness what do you expect media unconscious unconscious and then just find someone that you f find someone who's also unconscious unconscious have children who are unconscious unconscious and then cycle all right see you <laughs> good night everyone yeah yeah no i think uh i i like the uh i'm gonna drop uh, an idea in here that i'd like uh, you and others to chew on is all the excuses that you have in place um, the, the listener and yourself and myself, all the excuses we have in place for why we don't think that children can develop their own ability of self-care and nourishment for the rest of their life through school. You know, everyone, you know, is like, yeah, but that 33 year old needs a coach because they don't know how to do lunges, right? It's like, yeah, that's, that's reality. But, uh, but what is impact if we do know that it's easy? If we know it's easy, you just do patterns one day and pacing the next, and you just press repeat for 90 years. Why can't everyone do it? And you know, why can't everyone do it is that they're not taught that it's freely accessible. So what are you taught? You're taught algebra, which has no fucking place in 99% of everyone's 80 years of the rest of their life. Okay. And so you're spending, um, 60 hours in grade 12 on that thing, right? And where could 60 hours be better put together? You know, think about that, Jonathan. Uh, two CCPs back to back, right? And you can't tell me I can't dumb that down. So when someone at 18 finishes and they're like, I never need a fitness coach, like to be told what is harmful in exercise or to have to have a coach tell me I should choose broccoli or Doritos. How fucked up is that? This That's, is what the, 
So think about that concept and all the things that you come up with, which are like, it's not possible. That's fantasy, dude. Or, you know, fitness, you know, we need to have people in fitness because we're making an impact and we're good. You know, all that shit you come up with, that's fucking horse shit. That's horse shit. That's all, that's all what you want to make, make believe of, right? And you want it to happen. It doesn't mean it doesn't exist, right? It doesn't mean you're still not going to have 15 people in your class tomorrow, right? But just think really hard about that. How difficult do you really think it is for people to self-care and self-manage for the rest of their life? And what happens if they got an hour a day of that from grade three to grade 12? Do you think they can come out and make their own choices, right? Listen, if you decide to fucking do those things and not exercise and get sun, et cetera, good for you. But that's a burden you're Agreed. placing. That's a burden you're placing on you. And when you ask for support, when you decide not to do these things that we taught you, now we have a problem. Now we have a problem. But instead, instead, people can come out, they can make their own decisions, live the lives they want to live because this is a free nation, right? And then when it's like, oh, wait, now you probably shouldn't have done all those things for your lifestyle. It's like, fuck you. I need support based upon that. Right? It's like, whoa, 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 just a second. We all know, we all know what we need to do, right? And we all know that, you know, accumulation of toxins, wear and tear and genetic predispositions are what actually kill you, not old age. So what could you do to prevent those things? You need to exercise every day. You need to eat broccoli more often than Doritos. And that's it. It's not that fucking difficult, right? But we want to make it so complex. So I would just, I would just drop that one in to ask what people can chew on as a concept to your point of tying in education, tying in you having a child, tying in this concept of fitness being free and the concept of it tying in of low complexity in terms of what people actually have to do just so we can get past this whole shit, right? And stop making it super complicated. Um, and, uh, and I think that's where uh, it has to go. That's where the movement has to go. Yeah, no, I agree. I, unfortunately, I agree. And um, it's kind of, it's- Why is it unfortunate? Well, it's unfortunate because when I, so when I come into contact with these, these things, right? out there in the world that are breeding this so-called unconscious, unconscious knowers, right? Which again, they're just going to this- dissonance. Yeah. They're, again, they're it's just, they, they, they know that they know that they should get a coach, right? But they, they also know that they don't want to get a coach. They know that they can go out for a walk for 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Like me and my wife, we, we walk for like an hour every day. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, I find it fascinating. I find it just ridiculous that you, like you said, like you would need someone to tell this person to go out and walk, to choose the broccoli over the Doritos. And the reason why it's unfortunate is because to me, I don't see it progressing to the point of where we are getting, you know, un uh, I guess you would say conscious, conscious, where people are actually tuned in and actually aware, actually more caring of themselves because if that was the case then again the coaches wouldn't be wouldn't there wouldn't be a, a marketplace for coaches but there is a marketplace for coaches and the reason why there's a marketplace for coaches is because again it's 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 a it's a back and forth it's like yeah. the more that these people and and you know what it's like i'm thinking about it. it's like hey we're just capitalizing capitalizing off of their ignorance yeah and and they're aware of it too they're like yeah. yeah. If I didn't come here, I wouldn't know what I would do. And when I hear that shit, I'm like, what? Uh -huh. And it's, 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 yeah, we have good intentions. We have good intentions and it's almost like a, I see it as a timeline. It'll just take, it'll just take many, many years. Right. And it's not that, uh, yeah, I'm just willing to talk about those things, right? I'm talk I'm willing to talk about the concept of just dissolving the entire fitness, you know, complex. Um, and it is dissolved and it doesn't become such a conversation and it, it takes away everything of exercise oh. study in academia. But that would mean um, that would mean that it's actually part of James's identity, K Karen's identity. Let, let's not use Karen. <laughs> that just came to my mind for, you know, someone else's identity, mm -hmm. this person, that person. And now like it's an unspoken 
truth. Like that is the way in which you live. Like the way in which you live, like you start, you have a family or you don't have a family, but you take care of your health. But it, and, and again, why it even needs discussion more than that yeah. is itself unfortunate. That's the point. Like, oh, for sure. But we, we, have to, we have to know why. And the reason why is you're, you're, you're privy to this based upon the medical mo- mafia model is that there's a whole lot of uh, money to be made inside the rehabilitative therapeutic paradigm. So... You know, you have to make it troublesome and like, this is a big issue and lots of people are over fat and, you know, we have inconsistencies in the market for fitness and people don't know what to do. You need to push that as the narrative because it makes it make money for the people and what they're giving for that, which is what's called a therapeutic paradigm, right? And this is what you said earlier, which I want to tie back in. It's the exact same as medicine jumping on top of a fever saying you need to take this medicine when for thousands of years we knew you just got to let that shit burn that's a that's a natural process that gets rid of bad shit why would you want to stop that that's a little example but it's the exact same thing inside of fitness right it's it's there's sensationalism and like cool shit inside of uh therapeutic pain model discussions right and like just fucking all this cool performance stuff that I'm tying into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and so people are like, this is cool, this is cool. But then if you do that for eight years, you just, you just figure out you're in a room with four other people who are just saying the same fucking thing and you've made no impact. <laughs> it's true. No impact. And you've had thousands of people that didn't follow you or care about what you had to say, right? You just got four people and you're just talking back and forth on really cool shit down to the cellular level, right? And it's made no impact on your original intentions of getting people to become physically sovereign. You, know, it's, you, it's you, you want to know what's mind not, blowing. Yeah. Uh, dovetailing off of that, that physical sovereignty. I mean, I know you have, but man, I have watched clients past in the, in the past that have been, what's the best word to put this? They have been captivated by one idea of themselves or an issue, and they try to work it out in their fitness. And I'm like, I'm like, wow. Like when, when you actually talk with these people and you have a, a, a deep conversation, like why do you want to do this in the first place? Some of the answers you get, well, I always wanted him, I wanted my dad to say he's proud of me. Dude, when I heard shit like that, I'm like, you're, you're physically killing yourself inside of the gym because dad didn't say he was proud of you. And, you know, it's like, where is your physical sovereignty? If not, again, going down the same route of that unconscious, unconscious. Mm -hmm. Like I think about even myself, I thought, you know, if I snatch, finally, I got snatched 285, <laughs> back squatted over 400. I'm like, that's when it'll be. And it's like, no, I still was just too fucking slow on every single CrossFit workout to even, uh, you know, crack the top numbers of which I was not even in alignment with anyway, you know? And it's like, man, to be so imbalanced, but thinking you're balanced, or misaligned and thinking you're aligned and to go through many years of that, like, I, I mean, people do it all the time. Right. And it's the physical sovereignty part of it just makes me feel like, wow, I really wasn't physically sovereign then. And I hope I am, I am more aware of it now, but I just feel bad for the, a large portion of, I mean, a portion of clients that I've worked with, like, were yeah. really after something and they didn't address those things, but they thought that the fitness would be that answer, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's the, again, I'll, I'll repeat it. The biggest issue is not the hard problem of taking time for people to get aware of this physical sovereignty is the fact when they realize that their dad actually didn't give a shit. It's the story that they made up. That's the hardest part. Again, I'll repeat it in a different way. 
you think that people give a shit, where did that come from? You created that. You've created this entire turmoil and your entire existence based on something that's not real. Yep. And I know that from consultations with people. To your point, I would, I would I'd say on a, on a general less intense level, as an effect size, I'm talking hundreds, okay? So I'm not just pulling this out of my ass. It's, an, it's a concept I just saw over and over where I offered the opportunity of saying, you know what, let's just, let's just possibly recognize that they may not actually care. Have you ever thought about that? And then you can see the house start to fall down when they start thinking about that because that concept has never been offered. And then you got to be, like I've said to you, you might have heard me in OPEX gyms or CCP, you have to be there to catch the fall because yep. that's your responsibility of what you just did, right? You mm -hmm. have to be caring enough for the relationship to say, if I'm going to drop that in your lap of a change in perception, which as we know, changes realities for people, then you have to be able to offer a separate way, right? Now, and I just back to my point, this is the biggest issue is that people in the concept of physical sovereignty, they're scared shitless of taking responsibility of not only recognizing it's a fucking false reality story they've been telling themselves, but also that they can't do this themselves. They just internally know it. They don't have the get up and go. They don't have the will, you know, responsibility, accountability, you know, all these things. And I, I think that's where the interesting stuff is and where it falls, which is unfortunate reality is that only 5% of people who ironically are never in our gyms have that ability. 95% need, they think they need a dependent relationship in order to get to this autonomy level. So when yeah. I speak of autonomy, there's a huge amount of threat vibes that are sent out from that. And my whole point is, okay, we'll stop thinking about that. You need to sit back and go, why does that hurt me? Why does that hurt me? And be honest with yourself. And in most cases, you recognize that no one gives a shit. You've made up this entire story to think that people actually care. You know? Dude, that was how I felt when I was speaking with my coach in the back, uh, in the back, to, back in uh, like 2016, 2017. I, I was reading like Yuval Noah Harari, Homo Deus, Sapiens. And something like, just like washed over me. It's like, I'm the only person that gives a fuck about my fitness. Why do I care about anything outside of that? And I mean, funny enough, that year, um, I think it was 2019, 2019. Yeah. I did the open that year and I finished like, I think I finished like 982 in the, in the United States, I think. That's pretty good, man. If I was the, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I think I finished 982 or 1,002, something like that. And 982 sounds better. <laughs> but the funny thing, James, was that it was the if year. You know, if, you know, if you know, you know, you know that in top 1,000 is, uh, is pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I'm, and anybody can look this up. I'll, I'll have to link it. But that year, I trained less, thought less of like Instagram thought less of Facebook and was just like, dude, like no one gives a shit about my fitness anyway. So like, fuck it. I mean, I, I have to say like rowing and wall balls, those are like two things. I even think I beat, I mean, like uh, I beat some really top guys on that. Cause that were, I mean, I fucking loved wall balls, but. Was that 1919? Yeah. yeah, 1919. I think I got into the 10th round or starting. Ouch. Yeah, starting the, I don't know what I got into. And but. you're moving on that rower. Yeah, I think it was like 1,500 cows per hour the entire time. And then the last one, I fucking like just threw the rower, threw the rower, threw the handle, and then just ran over and got a wall. <laughs> that was disgusting. Oh, but. Did you watch Sam Briggs do that one? Oh, my God. That was fucking impressive. <sighs> and it was like 3 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, man. That's I was like, I was like this. Right, right there. I was like, this is crazy, man. And my, uh, my God, man, like, I think that year was the, uh, I want to say the, that last workout was fucking brutal. The, uh, it was like the 27, no, 30, what was it? 31, 27, 25, or 21, 15, nine of thrusters and chest of bars. 
Yeah. Oh, it was, it was so, so brutal, man. I, I remember, um, two that year was, a. Uh, there was a uh, the clean and the toe to bar workout. Yeah, it was just a brutal year. And um, anyway, so I had that conversation with myself then when I was reading all these books, and I'm like, I'm Jonathan Stewart living in 2019, 2018, whatever year it was, and I'm like, none of this shit really matters outside of the the time and power and image that I have of it. And I was like, all right, fuck it. Like I'm, I'm done with just like putting out more of myself and thinking that more was better in a way, you know, like yeah. I need to be, I need to be doing, I need to be doing this. I need to be. And I was like, fuck it. Like, I'm just going to sleep more. I'm going to work out a little bit less. And I fucking did better. Yeah. Good for you. Do it for the right reasons. Right. And it, it's, 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 again, it's something that you would think is so antithetical to the culture of more, you know, mm -hmm. and the yeah. culture of needing to impress. And like, I even, I mean, you know, I haven't seen, uh, I went off of Instagram in I think it was like, I actually probably remember the day. It was like June 1st or something around then. I'm not going to go into, actually, all right, I'll go into why. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I love that little like, I just saw like, your brain change in like half a second. I'm like, should I go into, I, I got off of Instagram because I was sick of seeing uh, black tiles on my Instagram. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, fuck this. I'm like, I'm off here. So I went off and uh, went off of Facebook not, not long after. And then, uh, now that I'm doing the podcast, I went back on just to promote it in some way, in some form or another. And I'm like, what I notice is like, you haven't even posted in a while. Why is that? I'm curious to know. Yeah, I, uh, well, there's a number of things in there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was, I'm going to tell you why, but actually, yeah, never mind. <laughs> um, I'm glad you noticed. <laughs> I, I care. <laughs> <laughs> See? No, I was literally just concerned and I'm like, I'm like, dude, is James all right? Like, you know, usually usually it's like usually it's like this is why you uh, fucking don't do dynamic contractions. <laughs> I'm <laughs> this so is why you live long and die. Yeah. I'm so, I'm so good. Um I'm so good not being there. How about that? I'll start yeah, that's that. that's the best answer. Um yeah, but the why, you know, I guess there's some things that uh, uh, just uh, make you aware. I was using, I, I wasn't an early adopter to, mm. you know, like I, I came, I guess, based upon everyone else. Mm. I was very late to get on Facebook and very late to get on Instagram. And then when I got inside of it um, and Twitter, um, I used Twitter as a place of just posting the podcasts I listened to because I, uh, I just didn't honestly like the conversation inside Twitter um, and uh, my version of what I consider reality. And I don't consider that reality. Um, that's just my opinion. Oh man. Um, There's about 200 million people who disagree with you, man. For sure. For sure. And, and they, they all have their own rights to their own opinions on that, but I don't think it's reality. But you're wrong, James. <laughs> yeah. I'm, <laughs> Hey, it's my opinion. Um, <laughs> it's not a fact. It's my opinion. Um, so, and then uh, Facebook, um, you know, I, I, uh, yeah, just Facebook was, uh, was interesting to me um, that uh, I was, you know, quote unquote friends with so many people, but I never really, I only saw, you know, the, uh, just the really shitty side of people in there. And that's just because the logarithm, it's Facebook's fault, right? It's not, it wasn't yeah, the people's fault. It was Facebook's fault because they wanted, um, you know, uh, you know, talk of, you know, dicks falling out of people's pants or, you know, someone saying something incorrectly. They wanted that at the top of my feed. And I, and I was like, yeah, but you know, I, I'd like to see my buddy from Wabush and his new Husky that he got like, but I'd never get to see that unless I wanted to spend three hours 
just nonstop or actually search for the one of 1,000 people that were actually true, true uh, internet friends, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of um, so that, and that's, that's, so again, I was an, I was an early, a late adopter to those things. And Instagram, I found it as a really cool way to keep myself honest with my consistency and what I liked in my exercise. So I used to do an exercise second section and track it, you know, and then because it was a part of my job to also be an educator, I would put things on there about conversations I'm having or podcasts or et cetera. And, uh, you know, um, I, I just was part of it. Cause that's just what you, well, this is the conversation <laughs> other direction. It's just what you've got to do. You have to be a part of the system in order to, quote unquote, play the game in order to understand the game, right? So, and I didn't see it, you know, incorrectly as a gamer. Like, that's just, you know, to give you an example. So, yeah. so that's where I was. And then, you know, I just, I, I don't know. There's a couple of, a uh, number of moving parts. Uh, number one, I've been following uh, Tristan Harris uh, mm -hmm. for, for many years now. Um, and uh, if you just research what he's up to and the kind of things that he's uncovered with, um, I just think uh, just what him and uh, him and a number of others have like are thinking about in terms of what reality is and how we're staying connected online. Um, I it just really resonated with me. And so yeah. his uh, his version of that is to, you know, ask yourself these questions like, um, is it adding value to my life for the experience of what it provides? Um, is it really in my value system, like my own personal value system of, you know, um, another thing that comes a part of that is, you know, are you being a role model for what your beliefs are that your children want to see in that, you know? Um, and so I took those couple of things and a number of others. And it's just like, it does not, it didn't provide value to me. And I want to spend more time reading books and, Mm -hmm. And, uh, and doing what I'm doing with you right now, which is real conversation on particular topics that uh, others could listen to, or you and I can learn about just by discussing things. Um, and I want this to be my reality. Um, and I, I just have decided I don't want those other things to be a concept of my reality. Um, and that, yeah. that's what it is. so what does that result in? I don't think there's any halfway. There's no, you don't mm -hmm. go halfway on that. Uh, so I don't uh, participate I'm writing my workouts down. Um, you know, I still have friends around the globe um, who send me messenger notes on my birthday, you know, or just, you know, people that I guess would really be in my close quarters. Um, but what matters to me is my children and what matters to me is my wife. Um, that's what matters to me. And everything outside of that, you know, no matter how, I don't care what you think about or anyone else, uh, OPEX and CCP and all those other things is an unbelievable, I'm grateful opportunity for me to share what I know and believe in. But that doesn't matter to me as much as my wife and my children. Um, and so I set standards for myself as to what that's going to be. And that involves uh, no social media. Um, but hey, if the game that I'm playing uh, doesn't result in uh, my business growing and it's because that I'm not quote unquote direct messaging a coach who wants to know about CCP, then I'll partake in that game again because it, uh, it has to, it has to benefit CCP in the end, as I as on the back end of me saying it doesn't really matter. Well, no, absolutely. you know, it does matter. I do feel a huge responsibility for uh, OPEX gyms and also uh, CCP coaches, but I want people to be, um, you know, uh, responsible for their own critical thinking. I think that's what brings you and I together, uh, rationality and um, objectivity and the concepts around that. Um, and I want people to be strengthened by that. And I want to be a role model for that. I don't want to be, I don't want to be uh, seen. And uh, that's a whole other issue if it really matters what I think about that. But that's my decision. I just do not want to be seen as that role model who's a hypocrite of what I believe in and what more realities are. And I want people to become physically sovereign over time um, and understand this beauty inside of exercise and fitness and its participation, but no one knows you're doing it. And so I need to participate in that. Um, and I want to exercise for the rest of my life. I want to do it every day and I love it. I love physical expression. 
I can teach others about that through coaches. I don't need to be telling everyone what I'm doing. You know, it's a, it's a long-term learning of recognizing that, that I, I really know no one cares. You may think people care, but no one does care. So how do I truly make an impact? I become a role model of physical sovereignty. You know, I do that myself when no one's watching and no one needs to see what I'm up to. Cause that's the high, I would say the highest order version of, you know, just walking off into the sunset and actually making an impact on changing people's ideas. So that's yeah. a long answer to the decision-making process that doesn't just come overnight, although it did, it's just a lot of things intersected and yeah, that's what's important to me. Yeah, no, I, uh, I hear that. And to be honest, it, um, resonates with me a lot because even now having the Instagram, having Facebook, it's like, like, damn, why do I have to, I mean, I have to partake in this because I want to promote the podcast, get information out there, but I'm using it solely as such. And that's it. Like nothing more than that. And I don't want in the game. You got got to play the game. Yeah. And it's, it's even annoying that you have to play the game. But, but that's, that's, uh, that's the only game in town. Exactly. That's society. You know, um, I spoke to, uh, you know, I also I'll often quote Bernie Novakowski, a mentor of mine who passed away many years ago as a client. And he was the uh, leading individual in the concepts of higher order thinking way back and political organization theories and fundamental systematics, et cetera. That's where I learned a lot of just, you know, did things. You, did you learn underneath him in college or was he actual just no, a- in- in, he was an in per, he was the classic he would I, how would you describe it it's the classic in person like Amos Tversky and Daniel Kahneman conversation you know like wow. spent, spent lots of time together under no institution or construction but he was just teaching me you know um, you know just an onslaught of uh, of you know just lots of stuff around higher order motion higher order wisdom higher order thinking higher order change, you know, I, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Anyways, the, the thing that he, um, you know, in the context there of you saying, well, I need to be a part of this system and this is social media, you gotta be a part of the game. Um, I think which is what people have to come down to recognize is that it, it all depends upon what you want to do, you know, like, mm. and just stick with those intentions. So to your and my point, like, and I said, if, if I need to, if I truly want to change the game, this is what, you know, be a change maker and actually make an impact. And this is why I mentioned this because I thought be about this honestly you before. Wish to see in the world, James, be the change you wish to see <laughs> in the world. Yeah. I mean, that, that sounds like a cliche statement. There is some stuff inside of it, yeah, yeah, of but, course. but um, I just want people to recognize just, you know, and we can talk about it humorously, but like my big dogs podcast or your podcast, it's like, we, it, it doesn't mean that the attempt of trying to share information is not worthwhile. No, absolutely not. But recognize there's only 10 people that listen to it. Yeah, yeah. So th- this is the, and this is, to, back to your point, is like, I need to be a part of the game. Well, Bernie, you know, set based upon game theory, he puts it in a different way. The first thing you need to do in order to, you know, change the game, right? Which a lot of people don't do today. Just everyone from, is, is all based upon this tech billionaire concept is this a subtle play for game changers veganism (laughs) maybe maybe i don't know let me see if you can extract it out of that that wasn't it but um you got to play the game this this is you know we forget you got to play the game in order for you to have any commentary any conversation any thoughts on it and then secondly you have to change the rules of the game right change the rules of the game so, and that, and that is intentional, right? And so you can take that whatever way you want. Like, well, how, mm-hmm. how do I change the rules of the game? Just think about that for a while. You yeah. got to change the rules, right? The rules has to change in your favor based upon you being inside the game. So to your point, social media, we got to be a part of it. Okay, I'll play that game. I played that game, right? But I want to change the rules. My, my personal thing I've just discussed with you, change the rules on my value in my relationship with myself. That's what I wanted to change. So I needed to change the rules on that, right? But you may want to change the rules. There. The third step is changing value. After you've played the game and changed the rules, then you can change the value of the game. And you change the value of the game, i.e. like what my stake in the ground concept was with OPEX gyms, is saying we value relationships, right? We value relationships. Now, 
we won't go on talking about the pluses and minuses and unknowns of that concept, but that's what the changing of the value was, right? And I talk about all the time, change the value of the coach, change, et cetera, et cetera. And then over time, when that gets stretched out really long, which takes sometimes centuries, not two years, <laughs> yeah. is that when you actually change the game. Right. Change the game is you have to talk about then effect size, right? Not 10 people listening to your podcast. It's Joe Rogan. Like that's changing the game, right? So you don't just say, Oh, I need to be like Joe Rogan. I, I I'm going to do a podcast. No, you got to play the game for a really, really long period of time. Then you change the rules. IE you write on Substack. You see that change the rules, right? So Barry Weiss, uh, uh, you can follow Matt Taibbi, uh, fucking yep. Douglas Murray. Yep. Uh, you know, go go sign up to their Substack, right? Why? Because now you're playing the game inside of them, changing the rules of the game, changing the rules of the game. So if you believe in freedom of speech and uh, concepts of good conversation and dialogue and etc., you have to go play there. Mm-hmm. You don't say you're a game changer because you're on Twitter. That's that's insanity right anyways back to the point of like you and i both have to be okay with the fact that we're just playing the game you know we're we're playing the game that's it yeah you no, okay I, with that? <laughs> yeah that's a that's a concept which i have to more i'm more so now getting um more awareness around like i'm going to use this for a specified end and that's it like there's nothing more than that just play with inside the realm of which i want to and no more extension of myself than needs to be. And if I feel like I'm overstepping this boundary, like I'm pulling back or I'm pulling out. Yeah. (laughs) No, I get you. Again, you're definitely going to get canceled. Uh, (laughs) The the overlap is, uh, is you'll know though, as you talk more and you speak with people and you have more conversation, you got to remember too, that there is, there is some positive, direction and optimism inside of you changing the rules, right? You are still embarking, although you're playing the game, you're embarking on little things, right? Like conversation with me today, right? Like maybe there's one person that heard about the fitness industry complex for the first time. How do you and I know that that doesn't spread like a virus to other people having conversation with it and them going, you know what? I just heard of this thing. And, you know, it made me really rethink. And then that person has that. And that that takes five years, but it's one thing. So you, you are like changing rules, right? Just by you playing the game. That's the thing we got to be optimistic about, you know, um, just to give you some, some, something, some happy thoughts on the back end of the, <laughs> what seems nihilistic. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I think that there isn't enough optimism um, in, in the world today. And in fact, I think it's a result of many things, which I won't go into, but Um, this idea of like, it's got to be now or never, like this now or never attitude has pervaded every single aspect of, of our lives that it doesn't give time to one, let's, let's call a spade a spade to have conversation that would be fruitful, that you would even want to engage in it to Mm -hmm. find out something Two, to want to begin, right? Like we want to become before we begin and three, like creating something truly great or truly worthwhile. Mm -hmm. Like we want to, we want to die before we have lived and we want to succeed before we have fallen. Mm -hmm. And And you know, know, I, I, I was, I was giggling as you were saying it because again, this is uncomfortable for people to hear too, but, this has been studied in, in experiments for 30 years that those individuals who show those characteristics of wanting stuff really quickly have, have shown over a long period of time of having lower levels of emotional intelligence as measured. This is, this is a fucking crazy, you know, paradigm of like, that no one wants to be okay with, right? It's like, no, 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 because I'm a part of things and like in it and fucking struggling and I'm adaptive and agile and wanting to get shut down quick. I'm definitely a part of the game and we're, we're, I'm, I'm like flying, I'm high and I'm top. And you know, you know, actually under, under, if we were to analyze that 30,000 foot view, it's actually a very low level of intelligence actually. 
Um, it's not showing patience and it's not showing, um, you know, conviction in basically the long game process of waiting to get to a point where you can, you know, and we just use the three examples, right? We're just like, oh, but Zuckerberg, uh, you know, Jack Dorsey, these are all, Beza, these are all the examples, right? They were agile and they were fast and the, no, they were fucking lucky. And they were 0.0000003% of the population that are all in the struggle, right? So no, they're not examples of what happens or how to live a, live an admirable life. Yet, this is all the, all these books, you know, anyone that I pull from you, conversational marketing, you know, and all these things are all from that concept. You need a platform and you need an app and you'll be a billionaire in three years and you need to get shit done now, you know? So to your point, again, that should make sense to us that um, it's at, but I think the, the discussion no one was willing to have is the uncomfortable one on what's the definition of emotional intelligence. Um, and as it, if I was just to analyze that, all those people thinking what you said thinking are, are low on that. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. data is shown that that's science. That's not my opinion. Yeah. And, and this need for this need for the easy road does more harm than good because it's like the more, not only is it resulting in lower emotional intelligence, but it's not giving anyone something solid to have their back against the wall, so to speak, as if they were going to have success. And I used to yeah. think about this when I was in my fitness business. I'm like, I really want to experience failure. I know that's a, a bad thing to be thinking about, but I almost felt that everything I went into was like, not a success, so to speak, but yeah. When I did ultra marathon running, I'm like, you're lucky. Yeah. In a way, like I, I did ultra marathon running. I'm like, you hated that. Yep. And the I want the ability you could be lucky. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck, I want to like fail at something. Like what? Mm -hmm. the only thing I've, I'm failing at now is <laughs> was applying for work in the age of coronavirus. And I'm like, fuck, I can't find any sort of jobs. Like, is there nothing out there? So that's why I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to do a podcast. Like I'm going to do what, I'm going to play the game and extend out conversations with people who I think are in the, in the realm of changing the game and let people listen to what it is that they're saying, how they came to be who they are and realize that we are all in the same boat and no one has any more claim over anything more than another. Um, but in fact, if we realize that perhaps things can go somewhat smoother, less nihilistic, less pessimistic. Not that there isn't a time and place for that, but to realize that there is something going on day in and day out and that you can participate in it. Not in the participation way we were talking about CrossFit, but in the way in which you, there's still time to grow. There is still time to be James Fitzgerald. There's still time to be Jonathan Stewart. There's time to be, you know, Karen, who's yelling at someone, but it's all within this realm of possibilities, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, uh, yeah, man, I agree at all those points. Um, I think it's a, uh, I don't think people, I don't think that move gets people to lowered emotional intelligence back to your first point. I think that they come in mm -hmm. with lowered emotional intelligence and that's what makes them think they can get stuff done so quickly. Um, yeah, but again, it should make sense to us. It should make sense to us. And I, I would agree there is there is some optimism to um, the conversation and the dialogue. Um, but I'm a, I'm a realist as well. Um, you know, does that uh, send, you know, uh, vibes through the internet that uh, creates change in eight years? Not a chance. It's not a chance whatsoever. And again, I'll go back on predictive models to where we are and use those big ones I used, right? Pol politics and awareness around uh, physical health. And uh, I could use a number of other ones, but it's not, it's not really make. And, you know, again, the same thing, it's, it's just making, it's making the, uh, yeah, what it's, what it's doing, it's drowning out what I think, I believe you want to do essentially, and you and I may not, not know we want to do this, but it's drowning out the opportunity to wake people up of, of recognizing there's a lot of great things inside of life that should come with patience and time to kind of like build an experience, you know? Absolutely. I could, I and, could not say it better. Yeah. And, 
but this is the thing is that it's, it's not, we always go back to this cliche comment is it's not that sexy. And herein lies the problem, right? It's like what we are essentially talking about is, I guess would be a very stoic, um, pacifist energy, right? It doesn't mean it's classified in that, but it's like, it's, so let just let things occur, right? Buddhist, like just let it be as it is, or it is what it is, etc. <laughs> you know, and that, and that, you know, and it's not that's not our tenants, but that, that's not that uh, it's not that exciting, you know. Um, and so the question has to be asked: Well, why does it have to be exciting? Well, life has to be exciting because that's what we've been taught. Like you got to be inside of social media on a whole, or there's no value. You see that? So mm-hmm. that's where it's. So yeah. it should it should make sense to us that we're just we're just developing generations of people that uh, that believe uh, believe in in this right yeah and um, man add a pessimistic line to that um, like I have you probably want to get on the streets and talk to fifteen to twenty year olds and uh, ask for their concept of what fitness is. Oof you won't be happy with what you get. Uh, I'm not saying they're all, uh, all lost, but if you thought, if you thought working with like 45 year old females that still thought that uh, uh, fat from butter was going to kill them, um, you thought that was a hard problem. You have isn't, no, you have and no isn't it, isn't it so interesting? Again, I know we've talked about this numerous times, but and these are well-intentioned young kids, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. Well-intentioned young kids. And that's part of the reason why none of them were inside of, my OPEX gym because the majority of the clients that I had were actually in their sixties, fifties, mm-hmm. and they're starting to understand their finitude that death is near. It's not, it's not, it's, it's more near now. It will be nearer in the future, but the things that matter now are, Hey, I'm going to be retiring soon. I'm going to, I want to spend more time with my kids, you know, Health is important to me now. It ha- sometimes it has been for some of these people. And it's like, you know, when you, when you hear, hear a conversation about dying, you're like, or when you hear a conversation about tr- like an actual love for someone, right? I think the reason why it's so important, the concept, is because it doesn't last, so to speak. Like, it's a transient, transient thing that is here today and gone but the fact that you were able to actually enjoy it and provide it and engage in it that makes that's what make that's what makes the difference and fitness is no different it's like the fact that you were able to express bodily prowess today tomorrow that's a beautiful thing mm-hmm. a natural thing I, yeah yeah same thing with a concept of love like yeah it's it's a natural extension of a, yeah, a, a, a de- and when you're looking at it like deterministically, like it's a natural extension of you propagating the species. Evolution. Yeah. 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 You got to love with lust in order to make another child. And you also have to love without lust within your group in order to get things done. And this is, I mean, it's arguable depending upon what your deepest beliefs are. But uh, that's where love arises, um, in my opinion, anyways. Um, and it's, it's been observed for hundreds of thousands of years. Um, and we just didn't create language for it or understanding of it. But it's there. Yeah, it's there. Hmm. Yeah. What, what, what books are you reading lately, James? What's the one that's on your, on your desk or uh, at home? Yeah, um, uh, The Politics Industry. Um, that's by Michael Porter and Catherine Gell. Um, I'm just, uh, halfway through that. I just finished up, uh, Life 3.0 by Max Tegmark. Um, he's the, he's one of the leading AI guys. Um, and I have some, uh, David Brooks, uh, books. Um, I read Social Animal way back and I've got a number of his books that, uh, um, I got lined up. Um, also I've been, uh, following Daniel Lieberman. Do you know Daniel Lieberman? Daniel Lieberman, correct me if I'm wrong, Daniel Lieberman, consciousness? Uh, oh, no, you're thinking of emotional intelligence, Daniel, uh, 
Daniel Goleman, perhaps. Oh, yeah. Uh, wait, was Daniel Lieberman a evolutionary biologist? Yes. Okay, and uh, and foot yeah. striking and uh, early yeah, early was, method. Uh, not, maybe not. not. Anyways, he's, he's a revolutionary biologist at Harvard, correct? I think he is. Yes. Yeah. 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 And he's written a book called Exercised ED. Ooh. Man, that one. And uh, I got another one for you. Give me a second. Sure, sure. It's so good. Uh, uh, Body in motion. Body in motion. Lionel Shriver. Others. Oh, <laughs> um, uh, the motion of the body through space. Oh, interesting. By Lionel Shriver. Doesn't it sound interesting? Absolutely. Dude, it sounds like it, a dance. It's fiction. Um, what? Dude, this lady writes, I mean, personally, if you follow her on Twitter or listen to her, like the kind of stuff she has is. But I mean, hey, we need those people, right? Because they shake up our our, our brain. Um, anyways, I, I listened to her speak about lockdowns, right? COVID lockdowns and et cetera. I was like, okay. But anyways, I'm willing to listen to her latest, read her latest book. And it was a, it was a zinger. It was so fucking good because she formulates this story of uh, her relationship with her husband and her old exercise addiction and the the loss of resources that she did for seemingly thinking she was a better person for 10 years from 30 to 40, which left oh, her God. with, which left her with, and I quote, uh, a dry vagina and no kneecaps. <laughs> and she talks, she, this is, remember, this is throughout the whole book. It is such a beautiful, like if I couldn't have, this is one of the things I think about and I couldn't have written it any better. Wow. It's so uncomfortable. Secondly, exercised Daniel Lieberman, um, is a book on, I've listened to him speak on two podcasts and I'm excited about the book at length, but he talks about all the things that I have been discussing in CCP and what you and I have discussed, right? This concept of exercise being social art, socially constructed and how we put all this energy into this 30 years of research around, you know, what makes people more powerful and what kills, you know, heart disease and what makes people less fat. And we spent all this energy on this concept and not once did we say, but what kind of exercise is good to live long and prosper? <laughs> and, and so he was like, you know, you go to these tribes hundred years ago and you ask people, ask them the question and they're like, uh, you know, do you, what, what is your training? And they're like training, <laughs> you know, the fact that they can't even answer the question or like, we just run in the morning. Why do you run? Oh, we got to run to that village to get that thing. You see what I'm saying? So it's this beautiful connection since the, the 19, late, late 1800s in, in the changes in industry and machines, et cetera. Um, Wendell Berry talks about this at length really well too, indirectly for fitness, but the whole loss of uh, just doing physical things that all of a sudden now we had to classify it as something. It's like, oh, this is called leisure and exercise. It's like, yep. what? I thought it was just kicking a soccer ball with my buddies. Oh, no, 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 no. This is this that's, is that's uh, called 10 exercise. minutes of foot sole, 10 minutes of you know legs movement. exercise right yeah. and we're going to analyze that shit ad nauseum right um it's like but but really it's just kicking a ball with other friends and having fun right oh no no no, no. it's uh it's 60 minutes of moderate intense activity based upon the physical activity guidelines you know mm -hmm. so he gets into that area of this you know, architecture of it and ask the hard questions, right? Like, what do you actually need to do? You know, um, and uh, I like it because I've been down that, that my own contemplation on this idea of um, another one I'll drop in here for you and everyone to think about because I'm interested in thoughts shared on that. You can email me, james at opexfit.com, if you um, about my aforementioned idea on children's uh, physical sovereignty and self care they can learn about. But I've been thinking about this one, Jonathan, of what are we actually capable as a general prescription, all humans capable of actually expressing in a lifetime? Like what can we actually express? Not the thousand pound deadlift, not three times 10 minutes gardening that physical activity questionnaires talk about. Like what are we actually capable of? And I'm arriving at these two areas that 
would fundamentally, you know, if you took all, if you put it in kind of a Huxley style cast system, <laughs> and said, Listen, I don't care what you think you have to do this today. <laughs> exactly. I know how fucked up that sounds, but anyways, this is where my brain goes. It's like, uh, you know, you, you know, when people are born in school, they're like, you do know that you could lift two times your body weight in a deadlift and you could run for two hours straight. Like this is the well accepted known thing that we all as humans are born with the capability of expressing. Now, it doesn't mean we're all going to achieve it. And there'd be, and in my argument, a plus or f minus 5% of each or either of those that if people strive to achieve just those two plus maybe five other versions, you can pull it whenever you want of your own biases. I think someone needs to snatch their body weight or whatever, fucking pull it in, but have good argument to yeah, yeah. <laughs> have good argument to what that expression would be. And then we can just get on with things, right? Like imagine if it was well accepted that, you know, everyone created societal agreement, not pressure, but agreement It's like, listen, we all need to exercise every day because there's this written rule that we can express two times our body weight in a deadlift and we could go for two hours. And so, you know, at your highest peak point in your life, you know, people are expressing this. Now, if you think really hard about that, you're like, it's only the elite, high affluent, whoop wearing, Apple fitness, Peloton, <laughs> exercisists, no, fuck, dude, Pelotons can't do this. <laughs> That's the only people that are doing it, right? And so you're thinking just because there's seven people that can do it, there's no way humans can express it on a whole. And my point is you're selling everyone short. You're being okay with mediocrity around moving every day. And everyone's afraid to create standards of what humans are actually objectively capable of expressing. Yeah, because if you create standards, people who don't meet that standard in the age of diversity, inclusion, equity would feel, and oh, I mean, sure. That's rightly, why standards are not created. rightly That's why so are not. for themselves. Oh, but, oh, but, the, oh, but the, oh, just a second though, just a second. We do have absolute standards in education. Oh, no one wants to, no one wants to bark at that one. Oh, so what you're saying is that you can have cognitive standards that we're all okay with, but when we say physical standards, oh, no, 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 we can't have that. It's you absurd. can't talk out of both sides of your mouth. You mm -hmm. can't do that, right? That's a, and that will fall flat five other ways in terms of that argument. So anyways, my thanks for listening, but that I, and I, I am continually trying to build the argument that will come up against that concept, mm -hmm. the die, hypothesis is always there. It's always back on my, thank you, Gad, for that. Um, <laughs> but it's a, uh, it's something that, you know, I think we can't be as scared of. We can't be scared of saying those things. And it comes from good intentions. I want to let everyone know that I, this, I have, I have built so many beautiful experiences in my life of trying to figure out physical expression that I'm telling you, and it's only one story. I'm telling you, it's a lot sweeter on the other side of what you figure out by trying to challenge yourself physically. Now, I'm not going to say that I didn't go to depths that were incorrect and unhealthy. I did, but that was through experimentation to actually figure out to land at this point where I can make a recommendation. Absolutely. Right? So, but, I, but we are capable of doing this. Mm -hmm. And so if your point is, oh, no one can run for two hours because so many people are over. That's, that's not what I'm, that's, yeah, that's not, not what you're getting after. You're not, uh, you're, you're, you're forgetting the fact that what you should need to say is, well, what is the model that needs to be built in order to get all those people to recognize they can go for two hours straight? And guess what that model is? Incremental normalcy. It's True. a very small, slow drip, long game approach of running for 10 minutes, then running for 12, then running for 20. You know, this is how it starts, right? Well, and I think it would have to start with a, uh bring in or Orwellian telescreens where people are like it's 6 a.m. and big brother has to we have to do Just, our exercises listen, listen we have you know you know this Jonathan it's 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 right in front of us right we seem to feel within the physical standards there's issues but we know throughout the world there's music that's played in a city where a million people hear that music or those sounds 
and we all abide by whatever your beliefs are the practice of adherence to this concept right think of it like that and you're like oh yeah but that just makes sense in the context of religion just think of it as a belief that all, that's all it is is a belief Mm -hmm. Why can't we have that in place? Do you immediately go freedom, freedom, right? Those million people are not thinking that that's not their issue. They're like, no, it's self-worth. I, it, I can attach to security and fundamental truths of what I believe in. Hey, it's all good. And now we can, you know, depending upon where you want to go with that for, you know, a moral landscape for individuals and where that can go wrong, where it can go right, et cetera. You know, that's a, that's a good conversation to have, but you can't tell me that you can't apply physical stuff to that, you know? And your argument is like, what? What's your argument? Really, that you're not gonna be including a whole lot of people? I didn't say that, I'm including everyone in that process, right? The argument would be, it would, it would be ridiculous to say that because it's not accomplishable and, but again, the same argument applies. It's not that it's accomplishable, it's the fact that they exist. The idea itself, exist out there in the world that these things because we know they are physically possible it's a it's a standard by which we can either measure against or not measure against but at least we have the standard there for sure for sure and listen if we don't know in the western world it's been done before jfk said this in different language right you know and you can go back and listen to it i've listened to it it still gives me goosebumps and because, maybe because he's dead and the pluses and minuses of JFK. <laughs> he said shit that I was a Canadian at the time where I looked at that stuff. I was like, that's inspiring. That's an inspiring message, which basically said, we are a weak country. We need to be stronger. Now, when he said that, of course, you could say whatever you want to think about, you know, the background handlings of this and his misgivings and et cetera, et cetera. What I heard in that was a realization of where we were moving, which is a reality where we are today. Cognition is really important. Physicality, super unimportant. Mm. Super important. And all policies and everything are leading around just forgetting that stuff, right? Instead, you know, what where you get is just argument on how do we support people who want to make bad decisions on their health and lifestyle? How do we support that? How do you support it? You have to have an inspiring picture of making people want to be physically expressive, right? So if your president says that, you may think he's right or wrong, but it may, it may spark a fire, right? Where people are like, yeah, let's fucking work out and exercise and, and dance and go play to music and whatever. And if people get lost in the fight, that's fine. But, you know, but instead, what do you have? You know, just to use a particular president, you know, you get a president who thinks that you don't do exercise because you'll waste energy from your battery. That's, That's insanity. Well, it, I mean, think about even our politicians, like, you know, like older, I mean, I'm not sure what their exercise regimens are, but it's like, we have, we're, we're even electing people who, who are yeah. cognitively possibly impaired, yeah. but, but, <laughs> but not true proponents of yeah. the healthy and role models of that lifestyle which would give some sort of, you know, inference to the population. Like, hey, these things are, are smart to do. Like coronavirus is going on. It is possibly a good thing to get outside and get vitamin D. Yeah. Like, Just it's for, a, yeah. Yeah. For, for the ones that, you know, you and I, and I think we're aware of that. We're the last people that, that uh, have any, uh, you know, any energy that can move people's perspectives around politics, but it doesn't mean we can't discuss that landscape. Mm -hmm. um, and I just wanted to mention that I'm a fucking, you know, I have a green card. Uh, I'm still a Canadian citizen. I'm working my way towards being an American in which I can bear arms and vote and uh, mm -hmm. not be sent back to Canada once I go to jail. Um, <laughs> if I go to jail. Um, but Ruth Bader Ginsburg was, you know, someone you could look at on the other side of that of, um, an antidote to aging, you know, where you know, no matter what you believe in her beliefs, yeah, yeah, she absolutely. still did take a role as a judge and someone who had these beliefs and stuff, but she exercised every day. Um, you know, you can go down 
roads of thought of discipline, obsession, et cetera, et cetera. But that the fact remains that they were physically, exp- she was physically expressive. Mm-hmm. So maybe she wouldn't have uh, the, the, the cognitive repertoire for the last 20 years. Absolutely. And depending upon what you think, if you go back, look at the history, um, again, this, wherever you land on your beliefs, it fundamentally a, 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 allowed a lot of great guardrails for this country and the democracy that it stands on. Now, if you can't see that, you've got your own political stuff you got to take care of, right? So just to your Joe Biden, indirect Joe Biden example of cognitive issues, yeah, um, but maybe he's doing as much physically as he can to maintain that cognitive repertoire. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You never know. Of course. Or, or to your point, it's very possible. That's reality. He's not doing anything at all, and he's just hanging on, which is fair. That's, it's fair. <laughs> it is what it is. But, but I think uh, the point... Well, remains- my whole point I wanted to talk about was the... And sorry, I apologize for, I just can't, I, I can't get it. I, I had to get it out because I can't, I don't know if I'll remember it, is that we need to all be possibly recognizing that it's up to us to be role models. Yes. What yes. we want to believe in, right? We can't look anymore to, uh, to people to make commentary around physical expression and, and work hardening. And, and if you think you're, gonna, you're waiting and waiting for that thing to happen, it's not going to happen. Yeah. No, Until that's what the point happen. that I was making. It, it's Don't like, it. yeah, it's, it's not so much the Joe Biden, the Barack Obamas, the, uh, the John McCain's, the George Bush's, H.W. Bill Clinton. It's like, we don't have realities of what a, a healthy human looks like that when looking at the results of our elected officials, it doesn't give us a basis to actually decipher and demarcate. Hey, like I, I want some, I want to vote for someone who looks healthy. Like I want to vote for someone who looks like they'll live until, you know, another 20 years. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? It's not the fact yeah, that for sure. It's just it, the, it, yeah. <laughs> there was, a, there was a, there was something that what I find interesting too is the fact that even in our politics alone, early on in America's founding, it wasn't actually lawyers who ran the country, right? Who were in Congress. It was just, again, farmers, people who had normal jobs, agriculturalists. Sometimes you'd have the lawyer, uh, uh, generals, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But now the lawyers went into the political structure Mm -hmm. and they're lawyering the law. But it's like, all, all the while forgetting in the past that the way in which a country does move forward is by, you know, the, the, the actual citizens themselves living more, living better lives. And one way in which they could live better lives is by engaging in physical expression in the first place. But the people who are there are people who have jobs that they sit down all day. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I haven't met. We don't have time for that. I we don't have met, time for that. I haven't met too many policy for it, but we don't have time for that. (laughs) Yeah. I haven't met too many healthy lawyers. Uh, I mean, I I know that that's a big generalization, but it's like, you know, that the, the job of a lawyer is it's like, it's a, I'm not saying we should be voting in fucking, uh, you know, Arnold. I mean, Arnold Schwarzenegger did get elected, but like people who are just engaged in fitness, but we don't, we just look at particular individuals and just say they said the right thing. Yeah. And let me, let me uh, engage in my tribalistic nature and agree with everything they they stand for and just fuck the rest. And, but we, we, we start to realize that like these people aren't even like, like healthy, like, like what, what, what are they engaged in? There's yeah. some of them are 60 years old, 70 years old. It's like, are these people that really are very like getting the most use of their faculties? I don't know. Yeah. Just a question to be had. Yeah. yeah. It's always, it's always that question, isn't it? To like, do you think that like a little intervention of 30 minutes of bodybuilding one day and easy aerobic work the next day at a real slow progressive rate, if you find time for it, do you think that there's effort in that, right? The time we would dedicate to that to a 2% change in cognitive repertoires that allow you to make better decisions. But this is the issue, which I'm learning, you know, cause we're in the politic conversation that's why, and this is just from my readings, right? So it doesn't mean that that's reality. And I'm a rookie at this relative to my existence here in America. Um, 
the politics industry in the book talks about that where there's it, it, it's all it's all a complex now where there's not even opportunity for those well-intentioned people their goal is to get reelected again or to say yes ma'am to everyone else in their group and if you don't say that which is what your people want you to say and this is the thing you're actually not representing your people you're representing your next election right because you got to agree with and if that's the way the game is played that's what they're saying is like let's just realize that's the game right and what i'm learning about the primaries and getting independent voices in the primary and all the efforts it takes to get to those levels et cetera, et cetera. i think at the lobbying et cetera level like i think this data was to 80 percent of everyone who leaves office yeah the revolving it, it door gets, it gets in they get into lobbying afterwards right to, to lobby a particular point for one of two particular groups right it's just a so that's called the complex or, it's a or complex. sugar <laughs> I mean, listen, that's so I think to the point of uh, where politics falls into that, um, again, that's where I go back to individual responsibility. And I think more of a, I guess it would be called a small L libertarian concept of, you know, just saying you, if there's, there's our people that can do this thing really good and you have the right to be able to do this and don't allow anything to get in the way for you doing this. I mean, it's available. It's right there in front of you. Um, and don't wait for the JFK language again. That's all I'm saying. It's not going to come again. It's not coming around. Um, yeah. You and I have to be that messenger, you know, and, and we've got to, we got to be that messenger in our home. Yes. In our home, right? Then you can get into your community, right? But you got to be that way in your home. And I just don't think a lot of people who are debating on Twitter have that, have that happening at home. Yeah, because the biggest assault against, that's where, I know this is sort of a, maybe an aside conversation. It's like, if you look at some of the, the works that have been written under like, quote unquote, communist re regimes, et cetera, isn't it interesting that they all fall, they're built upon a house of cards when you think about it, right? Mm -hmm. The reason why they're built upon a house of cards is because when you accept the dogma without question, the minute you don't accept it any longer, mm -hmm. it, it completely deteriorates. Mm -hmm. So it's like being someone who's engaged in fitness and caring about their health is actually a, an assault on those that don't think that way or who are changing the paradigm to shift towards we don't need to be healthy we just need to be accepted oh for sure and i'm i'm it, it makes me think back to when whole foods underneath the obama administration didn't want to give health care to all of its workers and everyone who was against that it was mostly people who were on the left mm -hmm. said fuck that we're not going to whole foods anymore and I'm sure they still go to Whole Foods, but it's like we're more concerned with the 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 the, the superfluous nature of it yeah. rather than realizing what would the, what was this person's reasoning. And it goes back to that communist point. It's like it's an assault on everything inclusion if you do want to stand for health. And I'm willing to make that sacrifice because the the data is there. And furthermore, like you said, being on the other side of that, crossing over the fence and thinking the grass is greener, it's fucking way greener. And yeah. it's, it's an appreciation. It, it is a good side. Yeah, it is a good side. We don't have a lot of strength over here, but uh, <laughs> it's a good side to be on, you know? Yeah. Um, it's good pastures, which makes me think about the, the concept long-term and what I propose pessimistically is a Gattaca situation long-term where I don't see it moving towards um, any version of small e equity um, in you know knowledge and accessibility to fitness. Um, I definitely see it moving towards a, 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 just a small percentage of people who are participating, knowingly participating, opting in, conscious of this, making them have better behaviors and and strengthening their cognition and allowing them to do what they want to do physically you know, uh, writing better books because they do that, 
Um, you know, I just heard a story <clears throat> about uh, this morning about Jordan Peterson um, and his recovery from a real traumatic experience, what he went through and, you know, what did he do during the periods of time? You know, he, he tried to lift weights and do some swimming as he was trying to get off these, these drugs. And, uh, you know, what, he, what does he do every day now? He gets up, has a sauna, and he uh, walks for 10 kilometers, and then he does some work, right? So I just use that as an N equals one of, of like, these are obvious uh, things that are accessible to us that create not only just good cognition, but sometimes great minds, and sometimes great minds that can starve off all these horrific exposures to medicine or assaults from trolls um, that can, you know, can get you something on the other side, right? So there is, there's a lot of benefits to that. But again, it's, uh, it's not sexy. And uh, we're not promising. We're not promising that. That's one thing we're not promising in our debate and conversation. We're saying it is hard. It is long. It's arduous. But you know what? It's a lot better on the other side. And, um, but the strength in that argument also falls flat because I can't prove to you, you know, a shit ton of evidence because it takes a lifetime to kill people, right? It's a, you know, I can't go on that. There'll always be the thousands of stories of like, yeah, but they only ate celery and smoked and they lived till they were 85. Like, you, you know, it's like, how do you, how do you argue against that? It's like, I can't, I can't argue against that. Same it's way. all depending upon the concept of what I said of potential. We all have to believe that humans have this potential. And I talk about it in terms of physical potential and physical expression. Well, what do you actually mean by that? Well, I've actually told you that two times body weight deadlift run for two hours straight for a whole big period of your life. And then hold on for fucking dear life for 40 years thereafter, right? And no one knows about it. That's what I said. So what are you going to say? And they don't have an answer to that. It's like, oh, I don't know. You play some sports in high school and then you walk around, you go to the fitness facility and it's like, you need more than that. You need more. That's, uh, that's not good enough. Well, I'll, I'll keep it there, James. I think uh, if anyone wants to, um, you know, understand their fitness, they could definitely go back through this conversation, you know, reach out to you. Uh, don't reach out to him on Instagram because he's no, I'm kidding. No, you can email him. <laughs> no, you can email James. Yeah. And um, I'm up for a chat. Come by Arizona and let's sit down and chat about some of those things too. If you got ideas on the concepts or, you know, I love uh, discussing those things in person uh, with individuals. It's a, uh, it's more real. Um, yeah. Just email me or go to opexfit.com. You know, there's still, I still do have a company that puts out information on fitness education and, you know, doing what we do day to day to make an impact, you know, move that thing. So, yeah. It was a pleasure speaking with you, James. I appreciate your time, man. And, uh, yeah, buddy, wish you all the best down there in Texas. You, uh, you, you and, uh, Elon and, uh, all the other big companies that are, uh, are jumping ship and heading to Texas, huh? I, I just couldn't stay locked down anymore, to be honest. It was just dragging on me, to be yeah. honest. So I want to see uh, I want to see a cowboy hat and jeans next time. <laughs> you're you're the uh, the third person to say that. So yeah. I'll definitely bring that on, and uh, maybe I'll send you a pair of uh, cowboy boots. Yeah, and you need to say y'all uh, at least five oh, times. Definitely. That's everywhere everywhere you go, and uh, good people down there. Oh yeah, I love it. It's a really nice place, man. And uh, if I'm ever back in Arizona, I'll be sure to stop by. Okay, buddy. All right, man. I hope you have a great day. Hey, take care. See you, bud.